Hi, my name is Mark Brenner and I'm the Flying Frog. The Flying Frog because I'm half British, but also half French. And I live in the southwest of France, flying a Jodel D150 Masqueray from Arcachon. I also fly Cessnas and Robins and seaplanes. And I have some friends with some rather cool aircraft. They very kindly, occasionally, let me fly them. I enjoy sharing my passion with friends, family and strangers, taking people flying over this amazing part of the world, which has some stunning scenery. So welcome to the channel. This is the Flying Frog. In this episode, I'm back in a PA-18 Super Cub seaplane at Biscaros. But this is not just any old Super Cub. This one was originally living in Italy, and it was flown in on its three wheels because it was a uh, land-based aircraft, and converted into a seaplane by Arthur and the team at Aquitaine Hydravion. This plane was bought and converted to replace another one which was unfortunately lost uh, during an accident on the lake in Biscarros a few months ago, fortunately with no injuries to the two people on board. It's got 150 horsepower and it flies like a dream. As the weather has been gradually getting warmer and warmer in the Arcachon and Biscars area, my friend and flight instructor Stefan suggested that we go flying together to perform my first ever beaching. Now one of the advantages of Biscaros, one of the many advantages of Biscaros, is that on the lake there are some fantastic sandy beaches and on one of the beaches there's a very good restaurant. So the plan was to practice my water landings and takeoffs, get back into the swing of things, and then to beach in front of the restaurant for what we could call a $200 burger. So we landed and I water taxied towards the shore. The closer we got to the beach, the more we had to slow down. and we were buzzed by a friendly pair of swans. At this stage, the aircraft becomes a boat. A rather basic and difficult to steer one, but a boat all the same, so headsets come off. So do the seatbelts. Stefan very bravely clambered out of the plane onto the float and guided me in towards the beach. Tout est coupé Oui, tout est coupé. Batterie, magnéto Magnéto coupé. Batterie coupée. Okay. Once we beached the aircraft, there followed a rather comical scene, which I've deliberately sped up a little bit to make things go by quicker. We were moving the plane around, trying to get it in the best angle, trying to line it up with the posts we were going to tie it to, and then we had to try and remember the knots we'd learned during our seaplane training to make sure the damn thing didn't just float away. Okay. 
And so with our aircraft safely tied up, Stefan and I were able to go for lunch at the restaurant. It's a great feeling sitting there eating and drinking a nice cold drink, non-alcoholic of course, and looking across at the beach and seeing your plane tied up safely. Another aircraft came and joined us a few minutes later. Once we'd had our coffee and settled the bill, it was time to head back to the plane, to get it back afloat, and to head back towards Biscaros. Next time, we'll meet my friend Christian Laribaud and find out more about his amazing home-built Jodel Mascaré project. Sur ce type d'avion, il n'y a pas de kit, et je l'ai construit parce qu'il n'existe pas ou peu. Il y en a eu très peu de construits par rapport au 112. Ceux que je connais sont en Angleterre parce que les Anglais sont fans des avions anciens et des Jodel. Et j'ai le numéro 214, alors que des Jodel, il y en a eu 3000, 4000 construits par les amateurs, construits par Jodel construit en sous-traitant, puisque c'était l'avion d'aéroclub typique qui était donné par l'État aux aéroclubs mmh. euh, à la belle époque où l'aviation était un peu favorisée. Mmh. I'll also be talking about flying frog merchandise. See you next time.